Now to the developing story in Baltimore and the violent collapse of the Key Bridge. This is how it looked before a cargo ship crashed into it a little before 2 a.m. And this is all the debris still scattered and submerged in that area. The pieces crews now have to sort through. The Francis Scott Key Bridge spans 1.6 miles and could take years to rebuild. And given its location, the economic impact could be devastating. Yeah, the water in the Patapsco River is frigid, maybe four. 46 degrees and tonight search teams are trying to recover six people who are missing and presumed dead. Here is where the investigation stands. Authorities say the ship lost power, sending it into the key bridge. Maryland's governor says a mayday call helped limit traffic, saving lives. Right now, there are several crews deployed trying to determine if any other cars were on the bridge. Traffic will ultimately be a nightmare for people in Baltimore and lead to higher shipping prices. All right, let's bring in Kevin Reese live our newsroom. You know, Texas is home to one of the largest ports in the country. Uh, could our state be asked to, to get involved here? Uh, it is possible that Texas could pick up some of the port traffic that can't get to Baltimore right now. But the immediate question for every port right now is how to avoid this from happening again. There are five major ports on the Texas coast, as most of you know, none bigger than the Port of Houston and the Houston Ship Channel, by tonnage the busiest port in the country. And three major bridges cross the Houston Ship Channel, including this one, the Fred Hartman Bridge near Baytown, and bridges that are part of Beltway 8 and the 610 Loop. That's what this one is right here. The Houston Ship Channel is the largest petrochemical complex in the entire country, much more dangerous cargo than most. 10,000 deep draft vessels a year, more than 200,000 barges. But here's what experts tell us makes it different. The bridge in Baltimore had pilings that were mostly unprotected and in 20 to 30 feet of water, possible, as we found out, to take a direct hit. In Houston, most of the bridge pilings are in very shallow water, three to five feet in some places, outside of the navigation channel and with fender protection systems to hopefully deflect any errant ship traffic. Once again, outside the navigation channel and very, very shallow water. So almost impossible for a vessel to hit those pilings. Uh, that's something in this area, like I said, because of our fender system and some other protections, uh, we're not going to be having like a direct impact into those columns. But that being said, there was a major disaster like Baltimore in South Padre in 2001. A tugboat captain lost control of a barge and crashed into a cement support pillar at the Queen Isabella Causeway Bridge. Eight people were killed when a center section of that bridge, as you can see, crumbled into the water. Chris. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Incident like this causing a lot of agencies to take a second look. Uh, you mentioned Texas ports might be assisting Baltimore uh, somehow. You know, what, what will, would they be doing? Well, we are told that uh, some of them uh, will offer to take some of that rerouted traffic if that does uh, need, to, need to happen. Although ports in New York and New Jersey might be first in line for that. This can have a major domino effect on supply chains, as we've been warned. And the ship pilots who help guide these massive ships in and out of port. Houston is offering its expertise to Baltimore as well, if needed. And we should also mention that Houston is in a multi-year process of a massive widening of the Houston ship channel there to help make it, they believe, more safe than it is now. Chris. All right, we can certainly hope so. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, there are still a lot of questions tonight between the ongoing investigation in Baltimore and its impact on other ports like Texas. Our digital team has compiled all this reporting into one place online. Go to WFAA.com to see a specific timeline and learn more about the nation's response. Fort Worth ISC.